clinical anatomy of the nasal cavity, focusing particularly on nosebleeds or epistaxis. Let us begin by cutting a cross section of the nose and looking at the general structure and look at the blood supply um, in the nasal cavity. The internal carotid is a branch of the common carotid artery. The internal carotid artery does not have any branches until it reaches the skull, basically, where it will give off the ophthalmic artery. The ophthalmic artery supplies the eyes, mainly, but also has several branches coming off it. Firstly, it has a branch called the posterior ethmoidal artery, and then the anterior ethmoidal artery. The anterior and posterior ethmoidal artery sort of meet at a section within the nasal cavity and supplies blood to this area. The sphenopalatine artery is a branch of the maxillary artery and also connects to this area here. The greater palatine artery is also another branch, a ventral branch of the maxillary artery. Finally, the superior labial artery is a branch of the facial artery and also converge somewhat to the same area. And this area here, which I'm talking about a lot, is essentially where a lot of these arteries meet up, and this is called the Kesselbach's area or Little's area. And this is a common source or site of nosebleeds. Nosebleeds are also called epistaxis. There can be anterior nosebleeds or posterior nosebleeds. So anterior epistaxis or posterior epistaxis. Posterior nosebleeds are more dangerous. With anterior nosebleeds, blood essentially runs anteriorly, so it comes out of the nose. Whereas posterior nosebleeds tends to be more aggressive and it allows blood to run backwards down the throat. There is an increased risk of blood clotting, which can run into the oral cavity, into your mouth, but also can go down towards the esophagus. And this can cause aspiration if it moves down towards the lungs. It is a posterior epistaxis if you can see blood in the oral cavity, as well as if you can see it coming out of your nose as well. And again, posterior nosebleeds are more serious, and bleed a lot more. The causes of epistaxis include idiopathic, just out of the blue, hypertension, having a nasal ar allergy, which causes irritation essentially, and then subsequent bleeding. It can also occur following trauma, like a punch to the nose. Tumors around the area can cause it, post-surgery, and having coagulopathies or vascular problems. The first thing with the management of epistaxis is to ask, does this person uh, need resuscitation? Is the person stable? Then you essentially go on to conservative management, which is usually good enough for anterior nosebleeds. And this essentially includes compressing the fleshy part of the nose, not the cartilage, for 20 minutes. Getting them to sit up and forward, but have the head comfortable. You can also use vasoconstrictors, such as local anesthetics, to also reduce the pain. This can be a spray or gel, and Little's area is targeted in this case. Following local, there is also the option of cauterization, sealing off the bleeding area, or packing the nasal cavity. So what happens here, for example, in anterior nosebleeds, a nasal tampon can be used. And a nasal tampon will essentially expand and absorb all this blood which is in the area. With posterior nosebleeds, you can pack the nasal cavity with gauze, and this can help. Or a step up is using a Foley's catheter, which can also be useful to stop the bleeding using pressure of a dilated balloon, essentially.